slow, take a deep breath and bring in the meaning of that wonderful song. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and glad to be back together once again. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome all of you. We do apologize for, no, there's no need to apologize. Things just happen as they're meant to happen. And we had a vacation last week as did Eric and was so thankful that he's back with us again so we can actually visually see each other and be together. We know who you are. You are a child of God. We also affirm that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I'm Esther Loveridge, and I'm happy to serve as the platform assistant today with our own Reverend Phil Pearson. If you'd like to know more about us, please check our website at capitalcityunity.org. And if you want to be on our mailing list, please send your request to capitalcityunity at gmail.com. That's also the best way to request some prayer time with Jackie, our prayer chaplain. Being on our mailing list will keep you up to date on whether we will be meeting in person, on Zoom, or both. So please check the eBlast each week for the latest development. And another part of our service each Sunday is reading Unity's Daily Word. Today, the word is aspire. I aspire to help create a world that works for all. I hold a vision of an equitable world, a global community that supports and encourages all people to live fully and reach their unique potential. I feel a kinship with those who hold a similar vision and work to realize it. My past experiences and present perspective show me what is mine to do and how I can contribute to realizing my vision. I trust I will be guided and inspired to find avenues of service where the things I do best and most enjoy doing will be most helpful. I bless people I may never meet, and I offer my time, talents, and efforts to further my vision of a new way of living. With clarity of purpose, I take my place among the growing network of caring, visionary souls. Again, I aspire to help create a world that works for all. And from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. The gifts he gave were to equip the saints for their work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. That's beautiful. So aspire to be all you can be today. Dear Father, Mother God, thank you for receiving the prayer requests that we placed in the prayer box and bless all of us as we follow our way shore Jesus Christ. Thank you for teaching us that we all have a different gift to share and our task is to find what is ours to do as we all weave our talents together. Amen. Now, as we do our weekly affirmations, <clears throat> I invite you to join me. But I'll repeat the affirmation first. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Would you like to join me? There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in your life. God, the good, omnipotent. And together, 
there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in your life, God, the good, omnipotent. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in this ministry, God, the good, omnipotent. And together, there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in this ministry, God, the good, omnipotent. And going beyond, there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in the world today, God, the good, omnipotent. And together, there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in the world today, God, the good, omnipotent. And I am so thankful for that. Well, thinking of us all working together, I thought of the song, We, and it's on page 212, and Eric has Sharon playing that music for us. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Sharon. And I don't know how many of you have the hymnals and were able to sing as we were all muted. And I hope you liked my lip sync, but I have found before on this Zoom, if I try to sing, that uh, there's a delay and it doesn't 
work too well to match up with the music. So I'll just read you one of these verses. It starts out, weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together to, in unity and love. We are many textures, we are many colors, each one different from the other, but we are entwined with one another in one another. Great, tap great tapestry. We are different in instruments, playing our own melodies, each one tuning to a different um, key, but we are all playing in harmony together. And I just love all of these songs. It's just so beautiful how we all are woven together. Well, next Sunday, will be Carolyn Ormundi will be back with us. She generally does come and serve us on the fourth Sunday of each month. And Claudia will be her platform assistant. Uh, Marty will continue to be our guest speaker on the first Sunday of each month. And Suzanne will be his platform assistant on March 5th for the last time. And Suzanne, we just want to thank you and appreciate you so much for all of your years of service on the board and for all of your continuing to be involved with the um, platforming. And uh, we so appreciate your dedication to God and this whole church family. Well, speaking of platform assistance, we are happy to announce that Brandy has accepted the call to join our platform assistance and will be with us the first Sunday in April. So welcome, Brandy, and we're so happy that you're willing to step up to the plate. I don't know that there's any other announcements except be sure and follow on your e-blast so you can be um, assured of whether we're meeting in person, in Zoom, or both next Sunday. And our meditation today is a song I love, which is, Oh, fill me with thy presence, Lord, and there's nothing I want more. And it's on page 40 in your hymnal. So Eric will play Sharon's recorded version of that. song is so beautiful every verse is just so meaningful and at the end it says thy presence hath been given me to live and radiate and truly that is true for all of us isn't it just to radiate God's love and light and I invite you to participate in this time of meditation by closing your eyes if you wish and relax in whatever manner you are comfortable I like to take a deep breath and center myself. 
And as we quiet our minds and go to that special place we call home, I want to share some thoughts about the Lord's Prayer. We start out by addressing spirit as our Father. That means that the spirit is the father or sire of all of us, thus creating a community of brothers and sisters. We are all his children and we can come boldly to him in prayer at any time. We then add the words, who art in heaven. Where is your heaven? It may be considered to be some far out place in the sky, or perhaps right here in our homes as we gather as one. We then add, hallowed be thy name. We affirm that the I am is a sacred name whenever we use it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As we set aside our egos and submit to his will, we can be in the flow of what spirit wants to accomplish in the lives of all of us on earth as it is in heaven. We also ask for our daily bread. We give thanks for all of his provisions and recognize that all we need is within our grasp today. Today is all there is. We say, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven others. For it is as we forgive others of what we view as their transgressions, we also receive forgiveness for our own errors. We recognize we need help when we say, and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For God is always at our side and ever ready to lead us every step of the way. Surely he is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever as we put our trust in him to guide us each day. There is only one power and one presence, God the good omnipotent, and we join our hearts as we clued by saying, Amen. I hope you enjoyed that little explanation about that. And um, I like to give Phil as much time as possible. And I'm introducing him once again, the man who married us, the man we love, Phil Pearson, who's on with us from Zoom in Reno. What a blessing it is to have you with us and share your words of wisdom today. Thank you for continuing to minister to us. We cherish this time together with you. Thank you, Esther, for that very kind and loving uh, introduction. I wanna begin by saying I was gonna to talk to you today about the Lord's Prayer, but uh, we've already had that lesson. I have nothing to say. I, 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 I was using that same thing. What are we going to do? Oh, I'm confused. I wasn't going to give that lesson. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that, crap, that passed my mind. Though. What if I've been planning to do the Lord's Prayer? We'd have been in trouble. Anyway, um, it's so wonderful to be with you. And as you can look, at me, I hope you can see that uh, we're having wonderful rainbow weather here in Reno. Isn't that something? You can see that I'm sitting on a mountaintop because the trees are down below me there. Do you see all that, Esther? Okay, good. Um, what happened is when my son was visiting me sometime back, he said, uh, 
well, you know, we can create any kind of background you want. And so I said, oh, well, that's great. So anyway, he did his thing and had all these different, he's got lots of beautiful pictures of Unity Village. And um, anyway, yesterday, a friend of mine was working with me and seeing these and apparently put this uh, rainbow background on here. And so when I turned on today, I was surprised to see I'm sitting in a rainbow. I have to be honest with you, that, that rainbow was about uh two years back <laughs> anyway it was taken from my porch before where i lived and uh one of my favorite double rainbow pictures well i i have looked forward to sharing this with you today because it's certainly in my consideration of sharing it um blessed me with the sense of how important for me is to understand this when I was with you last time, which was uh, about a month ago, I uh, talked with you about an article that was in Time magazine. It was an article that thrilled me because it was about uh, three different uh, uh, professors at the outstanding university. Yale was one of them. And uh, Yale was significant because one of the professors had sort of kicked off what I was referring to there when she decided to offer to the students a class that said happiness is not something outside of you that you need to get hold of and have in your life. Happiness is a result of only one thing, and that's your own inner determination to think those thoughts that bring happiness and to create those activities in your outer life, like time up in the uh, woods or forests or with friends, that these things are all significant to creating happiness. And there, it is a real happiness that no money can possibly buy. Well, when I came across this in uh, Time magazine, I was, of course, so thrilled because essentially when they're moving, uh, oh no, I want to add one thing. The professor at Yale University is the first one to offer a class to the students in how to find happiness. And the wonderful thing was she had a thousand people sign up. There was no facility to be able to even hand that big a class. That's what people really are hungry for. How do you find happiness? Many of them know it's not the outer things, but on the other hand, they don't know where to go. They can't always be happy by getting something like money or, or some kind of trip or something. It's not in the outer, it's within ourselves. So anyway, I was uh, amazed and thrilled about the reaction the professor at Yale got out of her class. But this past week, I was double thrilled because I saw in a news item uh, video that this work was being taken down to the high school level. Whoa, I mean, that is so thrilling because if it's as successful as I think it will be, if it's taught correctly, the students will experience a kind of new life of happiness that they don't normally find and the word will spread to others. And my guess and my assurance actually is that high school level education around the country will begin to include this in their curriculum, even as they're beginning to do at the university level. And while that has nothing to do with what we think of spirituality based on understanding that it all comes forth from God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because once people find really happiness in their life, they will just naturally gravitate to the concept that we hold so strongly in our unity work. So anyway, I begin on that note again by saying the world is changing and it is changing for the better. So there's plenty of evidence of unhappiness in our world and cruelty, but beneath all that is this moving current of the truth, principles of truth being given to and embraced by our world. Well, when I got onto that lesson for you, it was based on the article in Time magazine. But I have another magazine 
that I want to share something from, uh, at least is what sparked us to our sharing today. And that is the other magazine that I take regularly, which is The Atlantic. The Atlantic. My guess is uh, a lot of people really don't know about The Atlantic, but it's probably our longest published magazine type of material in the United States. The founders of that were people like Ralph Waldo Emerson, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Harriet Henry Wordsworth Longfellow, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and John Greenleaf, Greenleaf Whittier. Well, with that kind of people committed to getting that uh, educational institution moving, or rather that publication moving, uh, it must be a publication of a publication of that which we all want to hear things like this that Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, wrote once, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Ralph Waldo Emerson. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And this kind of metaphysical insight, positive metaphysical insight, was shared by all the people who I have been a founder of the Atlantic. So you can imagine that I could take the Atlantic magazine and get a real boost out of it. Well, I looked at this last month's edition and in the cover, they have things like this. We're already living in the metaverse. Metaverse. Well, that's confusing a little bit, but means we have a, a living awareness of many dimensions, and we're beginning to open insights into other dimensions that we that are beyond our third. So anyway, that is certainly challenging. And then it goes on. Another feature article is Reality is Blurred. Reality is Blurred. I mean, people don't know what's going on anymore. Everything is blurred as to what is real. Whoa. And then the next one is Boredom is Intolerable. Boredom is Intolerable. And then it says, and everything is entertainment. And I thought, well, it doesn't quite sound like Ralph Waldo Emerson or any of these others. It is challenging indeed because they're indicating that what you think is not real anymore. And that uh, uh, in that consciousness of being sort of at sea, you have to be constantly entertained. When Americans <laughs> think, well, what is real anymore? What they're saying is that they just don't want to really think about it, so they want to be entertained all the time. I don't know whether you believe that or not, but you might believe it because the highest paid people in our world are entertainers. Did you ever think about that when you realize that the Poor guys who have to play lion in professional football, and they're always down on their haunches and pushing and shoving each other around. You think, oh, gee, that's a, a earthy kind of living. And you think, well, wonder what they make. $50,000 and healthy, minimal life or monthly wage. No, they make three and four and five up the... 10 or 15 million for being just a lineman. Why? Because they entertain us. How can they afford to do that? Because so many pay money to be entertained. So now uh, they've uh, really given me something to think about, but it's not an Emerson kind of thought. So I thought, you know, as people look at this kind of world and realize what they say is true. The population just has to be entertained these days. 
when it used to be that the population was creating their life around them. And, you know, we make a big thing of the pioneer life of people who built America. People went out and made it happen. But now we're saying all of these people who have benefited by what the pioneers that went ahead of us, now they just want to sit around and be entertained. So I have to put myself into that and say, what kind of a world are we having to deal with? I have the feeling that a lot of folks don't have an easy answer for that. The, the, not only don't have an easy, easy answer for what kind of world we live in, they know that it appears to be extremely negative. And many of them ask the same question, perhaps, what can I do about it? I know that's happening. I know we, we, we just feel sort of lost, so we want to be entertained, but what can I do about it? Well, churches around the country be saying the same thing. You can, you can pray about it. And we would say that in our unity works. You, certainly you can pray about it. And the feeling that I had when I was thinking again about this Atlantic uh, magazine and the articles that I read were very serious and very judgmental of what's happening in our world. I um, found myself thinking very silly, what more can I do about changing that? And it was a desire that I had, which was sort of different than saying, I'm praying about it. And when you say, I'm praying about you, you're singing, I'm, I'm expecting God to straighten it out. I'm affirming God's working to straighten it out. And that's the truth. But other than as you've put God to work, what are you and I can do about this? Instead of just feeling frustrated and turning the world off and being entertained, what can I do about it? Well, I was wrestling with that and thinking about, gosh, one time in my life when I was young, I was wanted to go in politics because I wanted to change the world. So if I were still in politics, I'd think, well, I got to get going to rouse my fellow politicians, do something without really probably knowing what to do. So um, possibly, hopefully, you've had that thought yourself. I don't want to be just captured up and be a victim of present day life and all of its challenges and confusion. I want to do something about it. And maybe you think, again, I'm not just going to pray about it. There must be something more I can do. And I was thinking that, as I suggested. And as I was thinking about, I suddenly saw on the screen a news uh, briefing that Bert Bacharach had just passed. And in subsequent programming about his passing, they played his music. And they played songs that I found myself immediately, as you would too, rocking back and forth because this man wrote beautiful music. And one of the greatest uh, things that he gave us was the wonderful gift that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That is all that I'm just aiming of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, love, love. Anyway, you can't help but rock with that. This man has such a wonderful flow. And, and Hal David, who wrote the, the words, went with his music so perfectly. That song has lived on. All the world needs now is love. And so anyway, while I was meditating, what can I do about this? I suddenly saw this come on my TV screen about his passing and immediately that song came into my mind and I thought, that's the answer that my communion with God had is you can give the gift of love. Because and now as I meditated over that gift that I felt God gave me of saying, that's your work. Your work is to love. I thought, you know, uh, 
how is that so fundamental and and meaningful? Because love, as you know, is not just an emotion or a feeling. So often when you say to people, you've got to learn to love or be more, they immediately think of getting that feeling. And quite often when you're asking them to love someone or something that they don't get that feeling for, they say, I can't love that. But in metaphysics, love is very clearly defined as the idea of it one Love is primarily and first of all, an idea, a living idea of it one It's the essence of the whole universe and our being. There is only one God, one mind in the universe. And we are in that mind. We are therefore one with that mind. Because in the reality of love, which is at the heart of God, obviously there is only at one moment. You can't separate yourself from God, whether you, you try or not, because you live and move and have your being in an at one moment with God. A one moment with God. So when I thought, I got to do more work with just loving people. It's so interesting because I have such an opportunity uh, being here where I am in this retirement home. Uh, I'm maybe, you know, there's only one other Unity student I know in the couple hundred that are here. And so uh, I would be unique from the group in that way. But um, I sometimes sit and I, share tables with people, some who maybe are very obese or some that are so negative, you can't believe it. You say, how are you today? I've never been worse. <laughs> and all these different things that come from people. And I find myself at times being highly critical and sad instead of being able to take them just as they are and realize I'm at one with you. I'm not here to criticize you or judgment, which makes me flip to again, that wonderful basic statement that Jesus gave us of all of the teachings, the first commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and your neighbor as yourself. And the, as I've shared in other lessons that we've had, that's the hard part to love yourself. And that's because you're so aware that you aren't all that I, you appear to be sometimes. I mean, I look at you and you look sweet to me, but uh, only you know what goes on sometimes that may not be all that sweet. And so, and you think, I don't, I'm not, that's not me. I'm not, I didn't think those thoughts, but they came up. And so you remember that you think I, I, I'm, not the person I should be. Anyway, I don't want to give the lesson to that again, but that's something we have to work with very strongly about loving ourselves, because if we don't love ourselves, we pass right on to our relationship to others, and we say, I, I love them except for that problem they've got. I, you know, they eat too much, and I, therefore I don't like them. No, I love them. It doesn't matter what they're doing. My consciousness has, as someone who loves, has to expand to the acceptance of one another just as we are. Doesn't mean we tolerate things that are anti-society. We have to deal with them in a positive, as loving way as possible. But in general, we don't judge anyone, not in love. So um, I think, thinking again as about my work is to love and to understand what love is about. I can sense from my participation in Facebook that the world is getting the message. And it comes in such interesting ways. On Facebook, there's sections where you can just get all about animals. And I mean, they are so much fun to watch because animals are so funny. 
have such fun with each other and they are so intelligent, so loving. I, I just, I, I, when I have any need for a happy, positive change, I switch to that and look for some presentation of lamb, little lambs coming in, you know, they can barely walk, they're so tender and the mother takes such care of them. And then how a human comes and picks them up and the little lamb just cuddles up to that human. Anyway, it's a picture of joy and love that I, that I love because that's what we must be able to do in our life experience. One of my um, favorite affirmations is one that I got when I first went to uni school years ago because I'd never thought of myself in this way. I thought of myself, I'm just a human being. But the affirmation was, I'm a radiating center of divine energy, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to others. I'm a radiating center of divine energy, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to others. So that was back in the uh, 50s when I received that wonderful word and uh, appreciated it. But it was long before our physicists had come along and begin to give us a reason why intellectually this is such a powerful word. I am a radiating center of divine energy. I am a radiating center of divine energy. We now know, I say no, I would say there is a growing number of uh, top of our physicists around the world who are beginning to affirm what you think is what you get. And we who are a long time in unity say, oh yeah, of course, that's basic to us. What you think is what you get. But do you always think of it in terms of why does it work that way? That's because when you sit, right, as you're doing right now and your wheels are going around and you're thinking, you are actually releasing invisible to the human eye energy out into the world, fills your home and goes out into the world and actually goes into the universe in terms of what we're understanding about the way in which consciousness works. You are a radiating center. As I'm looking at four, uh, three of you on the screen right now, I'm seeing you with you and I, you're radiating out to me right now. You're radiating in your brand of energy. We are all radiating our brand of energy. I am a radiating center of divine energy, and that's the affirmation part of it. We radiate what we are in consciousness, ideally. I radiate the divine. I radiate divine energy. I radiate the center of divine energy. But whether we reach that level of divine energy as a blessing to the world around us, we are radiating what we are in consciousness. So when we talk about uh, why it's important, why I would get that intuitive sort of response when I asked, what can I do? And the thought was, even beyond prayer, you can practice the most basic thing in the truth in the world. We're all one. There is only oneness. And therefore, in that oneness, I can not critique For me to critique, I'm revealing what's actually inside myself. I recognize and feel. I, and I, I know you must feel as I do when I close my eyes and begin to think, of, I am a radiating center of divine energy. I am right now as I sit here in Reno, Nevada, I'm radiating energy out to the world, which is passing right through you. 
and out into the world and the universe. That's not only a wonderful metaphysical thought, but as I say, the cutting edge physicists are beginning to affirm the same thing. The human thought is a source of energy. What I have shared with you in the past, and I keep going back to this is so important to understand, is that when you release your energy, it immediately becomes enmeshed in your energy. And the compilation of our energy determines what actually is created in manifestation. Because the energy that we release in consciousness, in mind, is that which shapes matter and substance in our life and in our personal world. So what we blend together is incredibly important. In metaphysics, we have a name for it. It's called race consciousness race consciousness and of my 60 some odd years of trying to think about all this i realized this that i'm sharing with us right now and most of you know this we're we're reviewing it together that race consciousness is the combined consciousness of all of us when we say race we really embrace the the world not any particular race all the world and that blend of consciousness is what is causing the world around us to manifest and happen. That's why we have so much confusion in the world, because at this point in evolution, I think human beings are on a cutting edge. Again, we have a cloudy vision, of, and, and I'm not talking to you particularly personally. I'm talking about the race again, people around the world. They're not really sure of what is happening in our world. And so it's a mishmash. And that's what we're getting in the physical conditions of the world. We got a mishmash. There's so much good that's still going on. But there's so much that is negative. And it's so big that it clouds, tends to cloud over the realization that there's the other part of good that's still working. You know, I, I forgot something I wanted to share with you that's sort of personal. Let's see if I got time. Holy smokes, I really I'll talk myself today. I don't have time. I'll have to share it some other time about blind horses and that sort of thing. Being, oh, there I open my mouth. About a woman who created a ranch just for blind horses. And this was on Facebook meaning people around the world saw the story of her saving these blind horses. And across the answering bar where, it's, where people can contribute their thoughts came one, and I forget where it was, somewhere in, in the Middle East. And the words on it were, love is so good. Love, no, it didn't say so. It just said, love is good. And I thought, that's somebody way over there in the Mideast. I don't know, madam, would, wouldn't recognize. But they're thinking that same thought. Love is so good. That's it. That's what it's all about. Well, I say I, I'll talk myself, so I'm just going to wrap it up by saying, what can you do? Yes. Give thanks to God that this is God's world and God is, charge, is in charge. But Beyond that, know that you can do something for the world and me. The more you create a consciousness of total love, of at one moment, with all that is good, with God, with all people, there's no room for judgment. No matter how mixed up people get, love does not judge. Love only continues to hold the vision of their inner potential. No, dear God, we give thanks that as we grow together, we gain more of our insight as to the wonder of your being and our oneness in you. Thank you, God. Amen. Good to be with you. Love you all. 
<laughs> wonderful, wonderful. You remind me of uh, one of my favorite characters on TV, and that was Mr. Rogers. Oh, he, 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 always, he yeah. always said, I love you just the way you are. Uh -huh. And uh, it was so affirming that that is something we can actively do in our lives, isn't it? We don't have to blindly say, okay, I'll pray and God will take care of it. We are his hands and feet and we are co-creators, aren't we? And with that in mind, it's uh, time to talk about we love to give as well. We give in so many ways. We give of our time, we give of our treasure, we give of our love to one another. And we keep this ministry going by the contributions that we make. And so even if you're on Zoom and you give when we're in person, that's wonderful. Or if you have other ways of giving, we want to honor you for all of you who do help us continue this ministry. So thank you and God bless. And our closing song is on page 119 and it is Love is the Only Power. And as a congregation, we, let's all sing that together. Love is the only power. Love is the only power. Love is the only power. And as we close the service together, we say the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds, surrounds us. us. The love of God enfolds us. us. The, power the power of God, God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well <laughs> god bless you god bless you and we'll see you next week thank you thank, thank you very you. much thank you phil thank you thank you phil thank you phil <laughs>